In episode number 12 of this video series, I showed you how to draw three cubes. So, like this. Uh, three cubes with three different uh, transformations. So, the problem with this method is we have separate draw calls for each cube. So, this is the first cube draw call, this is the second, and this is the third. So try to imagine if you want to draw, let's say, 1,000 or 100,000 of these cubes. Uh, you will need, with this method, you will need to have 100,000 draw calls, which will slow down your application like hell. And to actually solve this problem, we are going to use instancing or instanced rendering. So I'm going to this file, which is episode 20, Instance Rendering. And uh, I already wrote out the code. I'm just going to show you the end result. So using instancing, now we have in this scene 100, more than 100,000 cubes, and using only one draw call. And this runs very smoothly, although I'm not sure, but probably in the video recording it will be lagging because of the recording. But just download this code from my GitHub page and try it out at your own, uh, in your own uh, computer. And I'm just going to show you the code and how it works. So to actually uh, create uh, that scene I just sh showed you, it's fairly simple. So um, I'm just changed the vertex shader. I'm going back to it a little bit later. And here I'm just uh, created a vertex buffer for each cube. So uh, it has three positions. I'm in one position with three values. So X, Y, Z and texture coordinates U, V. This is the next vertex and so on. And I also created here an index buffer for the index drawing and here are the VAO for the cube, the VBO, the vertex buffer object, and the element buffer object. And here are just a, just a, a cube uh, vertex three pointer settings. And the most interesting part is here, the instance VBO. So I'm created an instance list, the instance array, uh, and I'm also created here an offset, and which is set to one. And here are the actual translations. So I have three, uh, four loops uh, nested inside. So first I'm starting with the Z axis and inside the Z axis, the, uh, the, uh, the Y axis and inside the Y axis, there is the X axis. So for each run of this, I mean, not the each run, but uh, after these three nested loops finishes, we will have um, 125,000 translation vectors. And uh, I'm just going to show you, uh, because this starts at zero, goes to 100 with a step size of two, which means we are generating 50 values, but uh, these nested for loops will actually generate uh, 50 to the power of three, so 100,025 uh, different vector frees. And here I'm just changing for each, creating a translation vector and changing the x, the y and the z value based on the x plus the offset, y plus the offset and z plus the offset and I'm just appending uh, into the instance array the translation. So that's that way we are, uh, I'm generated 125,000 vector frees. And here I'm getting the instance array's length in this line before I'm flattening it on the next line. So this is needed because we need it for the for the actual uh, draw call. We need the size of how many how many vector frees have we have in this instance array. And as I said, it will be 125,000. And in the next line, I'm just creating from this 
Python list and NumPy array with the type of uh, NumPy.4.32 and I'm also flattening it out. So after the flattening it will be no more, it, its length will be no more 100,025 but times 3 because each vector has 3 values so that's why I did the length here because after flattening this NumPy array, array will have a length of 375,000. So here I'm creating the uh, just a simple VBO. This this is the same command as with the with the vertex array buffer. So glgen buffers. Here I'm binding as array buffer, and here in this line I'm sending uh, the data to the GPU. And here I'm enabling the vertex array at layout location 2, which is in the vertex shader, uh, this one. So layout location equals 2, input of type vector 3, attribute underscore offset, and this will be the offset. So here. Here I was, so enabling the attribute location, setting the GL vertex attrib pointer for layout location 2. And here is the interesting part, uh, this GL vertex attrib divisor for layout location 2. So this is the layout location in the vertex shader. And this one means every instance will have its own transform or translation uh, vector. And I'm just going to show you something uh, about this GL vertex attribute divisor here in the learnopengl.com. If you go to the advanced OpenGL and into the instancing, here you have um, a great explanation how instance uh, rendering or instancing works. And here is the here is the GL vertex attribute divisor. So here, what makes this code interesting is the last line where we call GL vertex attribute divisor. This function tells OpenGL when to update the content of a vertex attribute to the next element. Its first parameter is the vertex attribute in question, and the second parameter is the attribute divisor. By default, the attribute divisor is zero, which tells OpenGL to update the content of the of the vertex attribute each iteration of the vertex shader. By setting this attribute to 1, so we set it to 1, we are telling OpenGL that we want to update the content of the vertex attribute when we start to render a new instance. By setting it to 2, we would update the content every two instances and so on. By setting the attribute divisor to 1, we are effectively telling OpenGL that the vertex attribute at uh, attribute location 2 is an instanced array. Okay, so... And uh, from here, just the usual stuff, setting the shader, the clear color and the depth testing, creating projection, setting the initial cube position, so this will be applied to the whole scene, this um, translation matrix, and here just the uniform locations. And in the main application loop, I'm now using the GL draw element instanced. So the first argument is the, is the uh, mode or, or the type of the primitive what we went to draw, which is GL triangles, the length of the indices, so cube indices, type of the indices, which is GL inside int, and this is the off this is the offset which is set to none, and here we I'm using the length of instance array, so this variable. And uh, if you so, I'm using GL draw elements because I have an element buffer object. So I using uh, indexed drawing. If you want to draw without indices, so 
then in that case you can use the GLDraw arrays instance. So this can be very useful, instancing can be very useful when you want to create a particle system or some kind of uh, some kind of a system where you want to draw the same object over and over again and you don't want to have uh, several thousand draw calls and lastly just uh, talk about how the vertex shader was changed so as i already showed you i created a new layout location or a layout specifier which is an input of, of type vector free called a attribute offset. I mean a underscore offset, which is a stands for attribute. And in the main function of the vertex shader, I'm generating a vector free called final position. And the final position will be the attribute position plus the attribute offset. So these this is a vector free and this is also vector free and this will add the two vectors element wise and here in the gl position here is the local space so i'm here i'm just added the final position and uh, that's all what i changed in the vertex shader although just for fun i'm just going to add a little bit of movement so I'm just going to duplicate this line and create a new uniform matrix 4 and it will be called move and here uh, I'm going to multiply so here it here is the local position of each uh, vertice then it's moved to the word position using the model matrix and with this move matrix we are going to move the, uh, the world and uh, here I'm just going to uncomment this line which gets the uniform location from the uh, shader so the move and in the application loop I'm going to uncomment this line which creates a translation matrix and this uh, translation matrix will change uh, on the so this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis and it will change the z-axis so the camera or the view will move uh, through the scene so i'm also multiplying the glfw the get time by 10 because this returns a very small number and that's why i'm multiplying it by 10 and here i'm just going to set the uniform matrix for this uh, move location and now i'm also going to comment out this do movement which is responsible for the wasd movement because now it will move uh, everything will move um, automatically so let me see so now we have we still can rotate our head or our camera and now it moves i'm just going to set one thing here in the whole cube uh, position i'm just going to move it a little bit more back so minus 200 on the z-axis and i'm just going to a little bit slow it down so let's say times eight for the z-axis And now it looks very nice. So it goes through the whole scene and I think I'm going to use this instance rendering. Uh, I just wanted to create a particle system a long time ago, but I'm going back to it and I'm going to use this instancing to actually create that system and probably if it will be ready i'm going to show you now as you can see it is a good example how the clipping planes works so we have a clipping plane uh, the near is 0 0.1 and the far is 100 so after after uh, the cubes are farther than than this 100 they just disappear